This is Simply Lowai and you're listening to the expert with a heart. Hello to all of you keen listeners. Ahalya here keeping you company on Simply Lowai, uh, the podcast series with the expert with a heart, Lowai Navlaki, CEO and MD of International Money Matters. Now, if you're just tuning in and this is your first listen of our podcast series, welcome. I'm sure you're going to find this conversation and all the others we have had and will have uh very very intriguing and for those of you who tuned into episode 4 which was an introductory episode to this series that we're going to explore over the next couple of podcasts transition in the context of one's financial journey you will know that we have a very special guest Susan Bradley CFP CEFT and the founder of the Sudden Money Institute joining us on today's podcast as well so let's get this show on the road but first let me welcome our guest for today hi lovai hi susan thank you so much uh, for joining us good to be here thank you so much alia you know one of the things that i love the most about having conversations when it comes to finance uh, especially on this podcast series is that i always come across something new and transition planning uh is very very new to me as i'm sure it's going to be to many of our listeners today so why don't we start at the very beginning set the foundation first susan uh, ceft is um you know the certified financial transitionist certification is that right yes that's correct amazing so tell us a little bit about what it even means to be a financial transitionist and what transition is in this you know in, in the context of finances susan i think that would help us take the conversation further well we can start with just sharing the definition of a transitionist and that is one mm-hmm. who is fit and trained to manage change and we we are that we are skilled and trained to manage change but specifically we're trained to manage financial change and transitions start with change and what happens is once you get the elements of change under control then there is a transition that follows so change it leads to transition change leads to transition i really like that uh, trajectory actually and we're talking about this in the context of many big life changes that bring with them many big financial uh, changes as well right many of us may have already been through things like this where you know you find yourself kind of less equipped to deal with a changing financial situation because of a sudden life change it could be the loss of a loved one uh, maybe a separation from a long time partner a personal injury that renders you incapable of the work you used to do um so to take that further right uh, could you also talk a little bit about you know the the positives and negatives of transitions uh, does it bring both to them i'm sure it's a very difficult period of time in a lot of people's lives so a little bit of light to shine on that. Uh yeah, you know, what we found in 23 years ago when we began was that when life changes and you mentioned some of the big life events and some of them could just be moving. It could be a career change. Um and it could be a windfall. It it could be a some success that happens. But when money changes, life changes, and when life changes, money changes. And in the profession of financial planning, we are well trained to deal with the money change but not trained in the life change that's why we started the sun money institute which eventually became the financial transitionist institute in the beginning we thought we needed a change management model for financial planning but it turns out we really needed transition literacy and a transition planning model and that's what we've created and it works um differently for every individual we're all we're all very specific or situational when we go through these life events but what we've been managing to find is the universal elements of um the human experience of going through these events so that we can now work with people on their their personal human adjustment experience as well as the finances Yeah absolutely Lovai would you have anything to add uh, there in terms of your experience right being a financial advisor I think there was an interesting point that we uh, discussed in our previous podcast which is the idea 
of um, having you know specialists join the journey of financial advisory so do you see the the value of a specialization in financial transition being valuable to the you know overall financial advisory journey yeah absolutely alia and you know i must say that uh, this is one uh, certification that i have done and got into where i think it's well beyond just work it it becomes a life skill uh, it enables you to deal with situations yourself with family uh, who may not be clients but are going through a sort of emotional upheaval uh, at a time when there is some change and we all you know when i got into the program itself uh, my worry at when i got in was are these western sort of terms and are these things which only uh, you know will apply in advanced countries maybe they will not understand our cultural differences etc and then you know as i have been through this program and it's been of uh, a little over a decade that i've you know got into this i have realized that human beings are the same everywhere the brain sort of operates in pretty much a similar manner uh, mm-hmm. situations that you have gone through in life early on do dictate the way you think about life about money for sure and as a financial transitioners our job is largely to listen and not sort of prescribe but by listening you are able to sort of deep dive into how the human uh, being and at the other end whom you know most financial advisors will call clients but uh, that human being how is he thinking what what sort of direction uh, that we need to sort of help him create so that he feels comfortable and safe yeah no absolutely some really valuable insights um, and one thing in particular that stands out from both of your responses is also the idea of um showing you know the the human being as you said on the other side a way forward right and i want to get maybe anecdotal experiences from both of you in this area at a time that's so sensitive right especially emotionally for um the client at that time as advisors as a trusted advisor someone who they are choosing right to listen to and take advice from how do you actually change a mindset or show them uh, the the opportunities that lie ahead that word opportunity and possibility you know were um were introduced to me before the podcast so i just want to understand you know what goes into helping them with that transition as well what's interesting is most people don't realize they're in a transition they're Their, um their spouse or their partner has passed away or that they've retired they have names for these events they've inherited money they've sold their business but they don't see it as a life event they see it as more of a financial event if it's a sad event like the loss of a loved one then there's a lot of grief that they're having to deal with but it it can feel like it particularly for grief it can feel permanent like it's never going to get any better so to help people see that there's a trend transition that's going on for them that it has some predictability to go through some stages and that eventually they will get to the other side of it and more importantly there's some guidance and some skills that can be applied to make that transit that movement from the way life was to the way life will be to make it as smooth as possible and can have some good decisions that work for them in the long term not just the short term many people get stuck in short term thinking when their life is disrupted even if it's planned like a retirement there's guidance can make all the difference that's really really yeah. fascinating yeah no that's really fascinating um susan primarily the idea of not realizing that you're in a transition so there is actually somewhere to go you know take a next step towards um lova would you like to add to that yeah so you know i was going to say that you know while we think of let's say an event like a loss of a loved one as something okay first let me grieve uh then i will carry on with life it it happens over time uh we've seen situations which uh sometimes turn out opposite because uh, while you are sort of grieving for the for the loss of a loved one you also have some responsibilities which are financial uh which is you know making your kids grow up go to college and things like that so uh suddenly we we've seen situation very recently of someone who lost her loved one and she was you know doing some 
uh, work which was around managing uh, the the uh, individual patients in some some bit of uh, you know uh, psychiatric and psychological sort of help and she converted that to starting to earn because she that was the first priority that she needed to take care of which is the family needed to the kids of her now that their her life and she wanted to make sure that they were educated well so she had to earn so uh, what i have seen in this process is that when you understand people and human beings and you know life is happening sometimes you have to put you know the priorities or the order in which certain things happen are not necessarily sequential uh, or the way you would imagine the sequence to be and just being by their side because at times they will also react by saying oh i am feeling guilty that i am not grieving and if you could just hear them out and you know assure them that that's not their purpose they they are not trying to push away and say okay i'm not going to think about my spouse at all but it's 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 okay to focus on the here and now because i i have also seen a lot of people when you have many tasks on hand forget transition let's just take normal life and you have 20 things to do today or or, a, or they have piled up over the last week two weeks a month or so but for some time they'll keep accumulating and when you do something like this you are not taking decisions rationally you're taking them emotionally because i just want to wipe that list off my plate and just knowing and having someone at the other side who understands your emotion or who can maybe separate out and say okay you don't need to clear all these 20 things today let's focus on what needs to be done now um, and what is urgent and important and get that out of the way that's maybe something that uh, also comes up Yeah no a lot as usual you know a lot of different aspects of the human experience to take into consideration which i think is um what is so fascinating about the conversations around finance personal finance uh in today's day and age is the idea that so much of it revolves around the human experience in the day to day uh that it's really important to take that into account as well So, you know, to end today's podcast, uh, this is going to be a multiple part podcast everyone. There's a lot to unpack and uh, we've got Lova and Susan so we're going to use that time very well. But to wrap today's podcast for now, um let's talk about you know briefly a couple of situations and then in the episodes to come we'll dive uh deeper. Let's talk about, you know, retirement, the loss of a loved one and a sale of, you know, your own stake in a business or your own business and how a financial transitionist would work differently in any of these given situations um the floor is all yours let's discuss for briefly so uh, let's start with retirement uh, and yeah. you know in the early days as a financial planner the magical number to work out was what's the corpus you need to retire calculate what your expenses are work out some you know mathematics around returns and inflation and come up with that number and you know there was a aha moment two decades ago when financial planning came in when you know in india and you could throw out that number and say oh you know you need 8.45 crores to retire and you know to get there this is what you need to save every month or every year and then you will get there uh what we realized when you go through the transitionist approach is that there are many things that are crucial uh because when you put down these numbers you are not really putting down uh what is priority for you what is priority for your spouse what are some common things that you want to achieve and there are a few exercises that we go through during the program which really help uh, unearth for the individual what is really really important and you know as they always say that for the most important things please dedicate the most amount of resources and time and sometimes you ignore them because you know you think that's not going to require financial investment but it might require time and therefore the thing that you have put down to you know let's say go on vacations may get dropped or may get reduced because you really want to do something quite quite different so that's the thing on retirement that is top of my mind well the other thing that seems to happen in retirement around the world even people that have the money to do the life that they think that they want to have they've lost the identity of who they are 
They've lost their patterns and their routines and and their viability. So not everybody can do leisure sports. So like uh, I'm from the U.S., but play golf and cards all day at a, a country club. That might work for some, but it doesn't work for everyone. So reestablishing routines and responsibilities and making some kind of contribution in the world to family or to the community is a big thing. We have broken it down to the idea of having activities that meet four criteria: activities that are routine, that are social, that are challenging and measurable. So when we look at someone who's retiring, we ask them how many activities do they have that meet all four criteria. So we call it reboot. It's a reboot of routines. And it's a very easy thing for people to do. And what's funny is if one person, if there's a married couple and say the husband retires and the wife has been running the house, well, she's retired too. She has a whole different set of routine and responsibilities. <laughs> so yeah. in both of them doing the, the routine reboot. And it's, it's very respectful to bring in process that's easy to follow and that has a good payoff. Yeah, no, I that's uh, wonderful, you know, again, to take into account the extent of um, the impact, right, of that transition. Um, maybe let's move on to, again, briefly, the loss of a loved one. I imagine this has a very long checklist that one would have to follow in terms of process. There is an assumption worldwide that the loss would, would be followed by debilitating grief. Mm -hmm. Not always the truth. And in fact, some people have a delayed reaction to the grief. It can show up a year later. So we have to be very careful to stay right with the individual that's having the experience. So we take away our bias. Uh, we take away our bias and we listen. We listen carefully. Many times people just don't have energy. They're tired. And that fatigue is mental and physical fatigue. So that means they're not in their best place to make long-term decisions. So it's that decision-making process Levi was talking about, sorting through things, what really needs to be done and what can be put off for later. Yeah, and I'm just going to uh, keep my sort of uh, response short on the loss of a loved one, but I got into the program because of that. Uh, I lost a very close friend, uh, you know, 10, 12 years ago, and I was dealing with his uh, his wife and, you know, on, a, on the finances and I would schedule meetings because we had a whole bunch of things to go through uh, and complete. Uh, and my meetings were not just going anywhere. And that's when I went to US for a conference and I, you know, virtually bumped into Susan and the team there. And they were talking about transition. And I said, hey, one minute, you know, I have got a person like this whom I am meeting and uh, you know she's a young widow in the mid 40s and this happened two months ago and I'm setting up these meetings and that's all I had to say they actually told me how the meetings would be going and I said how do you know they said we've been doing this for more than a decade now and you have to you know really construct really short focused meetings because the attention span is just not there and I actually asked them, I said, so how long do you think it will take for her to come around? And they said seven years. Uh, yeah. And there was research on, research on that uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So I've been dealing with this friend and client now over these 11, 12 years. And I'm seeing the pattern actually play out the way they, they, they mentioned. And that's what got me into the program in the first place. Amazing, amazing. Um, you know, Lovai, also that kind of shines a light on the fact that there are two human beings involved in the experience of financial advisory, right? There's one person who's receiving the advice and one person giving it. And so much of, um, you know, your human experience as well probably informs that advisory. Okay, so to go on to the last situation, which is, you know, again, the personal sale of a stake in a business or your business as a whole again because this probably involves so many more people and a lot more collateral uh, can, can you shine a light on that a little bit Lovai Susan usually there's what we call an anticipation stage 
before mm -hmm. the business is sold. There's possibilities. It's usually a pretty um, um, demanding time for the business owner. It's harder to prepare to sell in a year or two than it is to run a business for another year. So many people put it off. But when it's it's going to be sold, there are actually some wonderful things that a trained financial transitionist can do to help prepare um, the individuals for life after the sale but also to help for some of the technicals with the sale because they have that traditional training. One of the things that's really important is to understand how a client uh, prefers to be communicated with during meetings and when they're receiving advice. And you can work this out before the business is sold. Some people want to go right to the bottom line. Other people want a lot of uh, personal time. Some people want options all the time. So we have a process that we've used for over 20 years to help a client tell their financial transitionists what works best for them, how to prepare me for a meeting, what to do or not to do in a meeting and how to follow up so that I can be my best. That's the idea behind it. So that's one thing that we would do maybe with a, um, a client that's going to sell the business. We would prepare them for high quality meetings before, during and then after the, the sale has gone through. You know, I have an interesting situation that I came across when I was going through the program. Uh, it was not sale of a business, but it was a sale of a large stake in the company that the person was working in. And he had a, you know, as Susan described, the anticipation stage. He had a list of things that he was spending the money on, even though the money was not yet received. Uh, <laughs> This is what's coming. And frankly, uh, during that time, one of the key things, uh, you know, that had to be covered as part of his goals was his son's education. And in the excitement of spending the money on a new car, on upgrading the kitchen, having a, you know, a entertainment room in the house, he had forgotten to add money for his son's education goal. Uh, not that he would forget later on, but in the conversation, it just did not come up. And I, I think that some of these things are, it sort of hits you when you realize that this is how the human brain works because you are so excited about something new that you are you know, actually forgotten the world uh, in that manner. And, and, and I was trying very hard. I was early in my program at that stage and I was trying hard to, and one of the things he wanted to do was to repay his home loan. And I'm saying, okay, he's going on spending the money and thinking that this is unlimited supply, but it's a one-time sale. How do I sort of hold him back? And the only question I asked him for that repayment of loan was, are you going to reduce the tenure of the loan? or are you going to reduce the amount that you're paying every month after you repay? And he says, I don't know. Very, very interesting situations that we've gone through in, in variety of this. And, you know, one thing I must tell you earlier that while I've done the program for, you know, these, these 10 years and Susan has been in this business 25 plus years, we are learning even today because not, you know, every situation is a copy paste of something else. There's something new that we are learning and figuring it out. No, of course. I mean, just taking from the fact that every human being is such a unique individual. I'm sure, you know, the complexities are just as unique every single time. And um, it, it's quite a little bit of, uh, you know, problem solving, right? Also coming to play when uh, you, you're faced with a different situation. Well, that brings us to the end of today's podcast, but we're going to tackle the very important transition of retirement because this is something that uh, is applicable not only to the person going through the transition but as Susan pointed out you know their family that is involved as well friends loved ones etc so we're going to dive deeper into that on our next podcast uh, tune in for that everyone but that brings us to the end of this episode of Simply Lovi we're going to be back uh, with the expert with a heart as well as the wonderful Susan Bradley stay tuned for that one and I'll catch you in a bit. That was an episode of the Simply Lovi podcast series. Expert with a heart. 